Who's Martin Reeder and why do we care? This guy gets paid to play beach volleyball. And if that isn't an enviable lifestyle, I don't know what is. Uh, you My name is Josie. My friends call me Restless. After getting married and having a child, I felt I had lost my adventurous spirit. I'm not one to sit idle, so I went in search of myself. I decided to add World Traveler to my job description, asking other people what makes them happy. Let's see what I find. Good morning. Welcome to Restless Josie. I'm here with Martin Reeder, who's a rising star on Canada's beach volleyball team. Hi, Martin. How's it going, Josie? Good. So can you tell me how growing up on Vancouver Island in uh, Canada, you got into beach volleyball? Well, I pretty much came out of the womb with a tan. My mom was a beach bum, literally throughout my childhood. So I was in the sand daily in the summertime. And I caught the sport when I was in grade five. There was actually a beach volleyball demonstration here in the Comox Valley in an ice rink. And I just caught the fever, so I was super young and decided then, I wrote in a journal that I wanted to play professional beach volleyball in Australia. I had no access to it on TV or anything, so I didn't even know it was a sport, and then it was inducted into the Olympic Games, and the rest is history. Just for the people at home who don't really understand beach volleyball, can you tell us what your year looks like? I mean, I know you travel around, and there's all these beautiful people, music playing. I mean, it sounds amazing. Is it as amazing as it sounds? It's pretty incredible. Uh, I continue living my dream because that's exactly what it is. It's a dream. It's uh, a lifestyle driven sport. So uh, the people are, are incredible. The places are magnificent and I wouldn't be doing anything else with my life. So it's, it's pretty easy to continue. And yes, yes. it is as good as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the last year, 210. So there's definitely been some highs and lows for you. You had, uh, couple times where you had to change partners there because of some injuries. Hmm. Take us through sort of the highs and lows of 210. I had to move over to, to Toronto to play with the national team there. They, they started a national team training group so changed my life. Moved over there in January and trained indoors in, in the off season which was a shift from uh, Brazil because I've been training there for the last three years during my off season. And then we played in a few Norseca tournaments which is a brand new Olympic qualifier. We won one of those down in the Cayman Islands, the first Cayman Island event, which was pretty excellent. And went on to El Salvador, where my partner hurt his knee, so he had to go have surgery and I had to change partners. And from there, it's been training in Toronto and then traveling around the world. We hit China, Poland, Moscow, and Czech Republic. And so what is that like when you're in a team sport and there's just two of you and you switch partners mid-season? That must be really disruptive to your game. Hugely, yeah. The, the joke is you're pretty much dating your partner. <laughs> you're in a, a male relationship. It's uh, you spend it's a so much. Yeah, it's a bromance. That's exactly right. Yeah, we spend so much time together. You're traveling, staying in the same hotel rooms. You're eating every single meal together. Literally spending every second on road trips together. So it it affects you because you develop a, a great bond with someone, and then if you have to change, that usually enters the court or it doesn't enter the court whereas your connection on the court is is interrupted so take us through how you're going to get your team to the olympics do you have a plan well right now let's just play as much as we can and it's it's really expensive because it's all over europe and we don't host any tournaments in canada so we have to fly over to europe constantly so just playing as many tournaments as possible playing in that scene and getting more acquainted with that level and the speed and the pace of the game I think is, is super important and next year is when the qualifications start so there's it's a two-year window yeah. before the Olympic Games where they count the best eight of your last whatever finishes so we have eight finishes to get some pretty solid results and from there hopefully we can qualify for the Olympic Games. You play an hour and a half and you play several games back to back with a small break in between. Mm -hmm. You're in the heat. How do you keep that intense razor sharp focus that you need to win? It's difficult. You're up against a fairly serious resistance in the sand. Yes. So to start off with, everything's about 15 to 20% harder. Then you add the 35, 40 degrees of Brazilian, Cyprus, crazy heat, 
humidity, it all adds up. It's all about strategic nutritional uh, supplements. So we have our electrolyte mixes, we have a specific ratio of protein that we make sure we have with our carbohydrates and our electrolytes, and we just make sure that we hydrate a lot. Um, a lot of sugar and making sure that we don't bring that carbohydrate level too far down where we lose our energy. So always feeding that so we're, we're energized. But really a lot of it has to do with training. If you're not prepared to play in this heat, your body can't hack it. You hear about it a lot with runners. If they're gonna run somewhere hot like a Hawaii Marathon, they'll go there a week beforehand and run mm -hmm. and try and adjust to the heat. Mm -hmm. How many days prep do you get when you're gonna play a game in a different country? Well, our tour generally goes one tournament a week consecutively throughout the summer. So once we're out of a tournament, we try to fly to the next tournament as soon as possible. Generally, we only have three days to adjust to the time, to the yeah. heat, to the, to the elements. Some places are crazy windy, like Marseille, France has yeah. 40, 45 degree, or sorry, uh, kilometer winds, like crazy winds. It changes the sport entirely. Or Cyprus is 44 degree heat and just madness. Norway is sometimes 10 degrees, so you gotta wear your full spandex suit. So <laughs> it's, uh, you only have three, three days to really acclimatize and, and get used to the local flavor. So tell me, what's it like when you're playing against some of your best friends? <laughs> it can be difficult. Uh, I like to think that it's one of my strengths to be able to do that and just leave it all in the court. Uh, we're besties. We travel with these guys nonstop. We have to literally be in each other's space at all times, and there's no exception when you're on the court. You know, it's uh, we we have to be able to work together on the court or off. And for me. We're all friends, so it's all good. If he beats me, that's fine. Yeah. I don't take it personally ever. And if I beat him, well, you know, I'm gonna still compliment him on his uh, on his moves and Sweet. we'll go from There's there. There's a respect for each other's huge, athleticism. Huge respect yeah. for each other's athleticism. Yeah, that's a great point. So tell us, Martin, what are your plans for the future? <sighs> Big question. Uh, heading off to Europe pretty quickly here and playing over there and come September, really looking forward to making a choice between California, hopefully training at Huntington Beach now. Oh wow. Or in Brazil, so. Those we'll, are tough choices. We'll see what happens once again. My heart goes out to Mark right now. <laughs> California or Brazil. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know how. That's good stuff. Ready for this? What? Well, look for Martin in the next Olympics in London in two years. Thanks very much. No problem. We got a high five. That's not how we do it on the set. Yes.